Folks who do manage to sign up for Obamacare could be in for a rude awakening when they try to see a doctor. They may have trouble with their insurance, but they may find that doctors just won't see them because the payments are very, very low. Experts are warning that many of the Obamacare plans will end up looking like Medicaid. With more and more patients chasing fewer doctors, that could lead to rationing. Let's talk about it with Byron York. He's a chief political correspondent for the Washington Examiners and a Fox News contributor. You know, Byron, uh, President Obama kept demeaning and a lot of people's in insurance plans, you know, calling them substandard Acme insurance and so forth. You know, these experts and analysts are warning Obamacare plans could resemble Medicaid, which, of course, is not just a medical program. It's become a, a pejorative because of its poor care. How do you see it? Right. Well, the, the first thing we should remember is that nobody has ever seen a doctor or visited a hospital under Obamacare. That starts next week, so there's going to be a lot to learn. But what we, what we do know is that one of the ways that o Obamacare saves money is to pay doctors less. We've talked a lot about higher premiums of Obamacare and higher deductibles of Obamacare. Maybe we've talked a little less about the narrower doctor networks and what what they're going to do is exert a downward pressure on reimbursing doctors if a doctor gets say a hundred dollars for a, a service or a visit under private insurance gets maybe seventy dollars for that same thing under medicare and about fifty five dollars under medicaid and it, the, the incentive is pretty obvious if, if if the rates get down to medicaid level reimbursement a lot of doctors are going to see fewer patients who, who have that coverage. Yeah, and the White House wants to sign up or add an additional nine million uh, to the Medicare rolls. Our own Dr. Mark Siegel penned an op-ed in today's Wall Street Journal. I want to get your reaction, but let me put it up on the screen here. How can quality of care not be affected if the antibiotic or statin drug or MRI scan I feel you need isn't covered? Uh, under your plan? How can Obamacare be labeled a success when it adds layers of bureaucracy to an already overburdened system? Valid points? Absolutely. That raises another point we really haven't talked a lot about much, which is going to be the limits on uh, prescription drugs that are in a lot of uh, uh, Obamacare plans. And really, when you talk about Medicaid again, we were talking about uh, Medicaid and those low reimbursements. We had a really groundbreaking study this year from the New England Journal of Medicine that showed that people on Medicaid, when you measured some key elements like blood pressure uh, and diabetes and cholesterol, they weren't any healthier than people who are, were totally uninsured. They had fewer financial worries. They worried less about paying for their care. But in terms of their actual care, they were no better than if they had had no insurance. So, I mean, there are a lot of questions about the actual value to patients of expanding the Medicaid roles, which Obamacare does, and basically extending Medicaid-like care to mm -hmm. millions of people with private coverage. I read your latest column, and in it you argue that Republicans should yet again um, undertake a renewed attempt to delay the individual mandate in Obamacare. And as partial justification for that, you pointed out something that had escaped a lot of us. The New York Times poll, 68 percent disapprove of the individual mandate, but among the uninsured. My goodness, 77 percent more people among the uninsured. Uh, disagree and disapprove of the individual mandate. So explain the, the importance of that. Well, the individual mandate is by far the most unpopular part of Obamacare. You're right about those numbers, 77 percent, and that's of the group that's supposed to benefit the most from this. Now, go back. Republicans uh, have tried to delay the individual mandate on a number of occasions. Back in the summer, when President Obama unilaterally delayed the employer mandate, Republicans said, well, hey, wait a minute. Why just give that uh, break only to business? What about individuals, too? Well, they held a vote to delay the individual mandate. Uh, all Republicans voted for it, and 22 House Democrats voted for it. And uh, my guess is now, if you uh, right. had that vote again, that was before the implementation of Obamacare. Now we've seen all the bad news. When Republicans hold that vote again, they're likely to get more than just 22 Democrats. Wow. Byron York, as always, great to see you. Thanks very much. Jamie? Thank you, Greg.